Okay, we're going to go with our demo here of managing a uh, Linux target, Red Hat, with ITIM. So here I'm going to log in as the administrator for the ITIM interface. And I'm going to show you I have two virtual machines here running on VMware. I have a Windows 2008 64-bit server. I also have a Red Hat Linux 64-bit here running. I am uh, logged in, as you can see, as the root user. And I will do a more on the Etsy password file and to show you the list of users I have. Um, specifically, I was looking for a user called Robert Smith. We can see he's there. So just an example um, that the user will find targeted users we're looking for here. Um, in here, we're going to say uh, uh, Jim Wills is a user. You can see the user J Wills does not exist on the system. Here's a list of all the users that are on the system. So you can see not too many. Uh, note the last. J Wills is not here. Last entry is the last one we update and put in. So here I'll go back to the Tim interface and I'll go to our manage users and I'm going to create my user Jim Wills. Standard setup, we won't go into the details, we'll just give it the basics. Wills is the last name, Jim Wills is the full name, preferred ID is W J Wills, and his first name is Jim, of course. So we're just going to create this. What it's going to do, nothing fancy, right? Simple LDAP entry for the user's first name, middle name, last name, and I'd submit that through. You, note the user has no organizational role. This will come into importance later. And hit continue. I'm going to say, uh, allow me to type a password. I'll give it a password, a Unix greater than DOS. And we're just going to submit that. So now Tim does its magic. It goes into its provisioning cycle. We look at the events. It created a new user. Okay, this means nothing to the Linux target yet. Just note. So we're going to look for our user, Wills, that was just created. Here it is, Jim Wills. And we look at the accounts that this user has. By default, Tim created it, its own account. Basically, to go into this interface as a standard user. Right now, I'm an administrator. So on the left-hand pane here, you see all of these options. These are administrator only. Okay. Um, let's close out. And we'll log off as our, and we'll log in as our user, Jim Wills. Password Unix greater than DOS. Just to show that it created an account. Um, note, the first time the user logs into the system, I set challenge response up. So it allows the user self-help later. Just give it some answers. And now I'm into the system. Note, I'm an end user. I'm a help desk user. That's the role. So I can do limited things. OK. So now let's go back into our administrator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to look at the service that I'm managing. I want to manage this Red Hat system. OK. This system is what I want to be able to manage the users on. Right now, I have a short list of users. I want to create a new user on this Red Hat target. Jim Wills does not have an account. Let's create him an account using ITIM, automated. Okay. We go back to ITIM and we find our user, Jim Wills. Okay. When his account comes in, we're going to modify his account and we're going to give him one role. We're going to give him our Watson role, IBM Watson Red Hat. When I give him this, it is going to automatically create him a Red Hat Linux account and it's going to provision him to the system by this role. Tim is a role-based provisioning tool. I gave him a role. The provisioning will now happen. We look at our request. It's a pending request. It goes through a couple of transaction stores, ultimately updating the user. It sends a remote managed interface through RMI and it connects as root, does a user add, make, gives them a geos comment, gives them a group. Uh, I pre-configured that in Tim. That's part of the provisioning policy logic. We go back over to our Red Hat system and we're going to look and our user is now present. Note the account. Okay. Now he was created. He had a specific UID provision to him. You can see he has a group, the Watson test group. Um, his user ID home directory is slash home slash jwills and his shell script is bash. How did Tim do that? Well, it did it just like your user add command. However, it just did it through a tool that we have in our provisioning policy. And that tool will be TDI and the dispatcher along with the provisioning policy. We look at our completed request for Tim and we see that the user has successfully been done. A user change has been done, a modified to the person's organizational role, 
policy has enforced that, created an account. There was some ordered provisioning. It gave it an account, add Red Hat. The status of that was success. It created the user J Wills. Now, how did it know to give it those specific parameters and why did it do that? This is the internals of Tim, but in principle, let me show you. There's a concept of a provisioning policy that's basically a governing set of rules that defines how the users are going to be created. I created one called Red Hat Watson, excuse me, Watson Red Hat. In that provisioning policy, I decided that only the members of the IBM Watson Red Hat group would be given that entitlement service and these set parameters. The parameters were his geo's comment name was going to be Watson test. His primary group was going to be established as Watson. Okay. So Tim pushed that all down. That looks fabulous. Now let's change the user on the native system on the Red Hat system and let's watch how that user now will have to have a account update done to himself in the form of a compliance check through Tim. Now I look here and I look at my user Jay Wills and he's part of the Watson group. Okay. When I look at him, his full name is the Geo's comment. That's the way we mapped it. And I'm going to call this um, fail. Okay. So we just updated the value of the full name, which we're calling the Geo's comment, um, uh, to fail. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with this. This is valid inside of Red Hat. I modified the user inside of Red Hat, right? Now, let me go back here and show you how Tim looks at that user, interrogates them, and says he's either compliant or non-compliant. It's a process called a reconciliation. The reconciliation is done at the service level. When we look at the service, we're going to only here be concerned about our Linux profile, but as you can see, we offer the solution for many more end targets. as a uh, POSIX Solaris, POSIX HP, POSIX AIX. Uh, right now, we're just going to look for our Red Hat one. This is the only one. So we're going to perform what we call a reconciliation. A reconciliation will go out and look on the end target. It'll query it. It'll find all the users in Etsy password, and it'll find all the supporting data that are basically going to return to us our valid users. I submit this request, and now what I've done is I've done a search. I'm making an API call to RMI to run a command line that basically says, go get me a list of all the users and the list of all of the supporting data for the user. Return it back to Tim and tell me what it has. And then I'm going to compare that against the provisioning policy that's tied to the user, and I'm going to tell you if the user is compliant or non-compliant. Remember, we modified the user's geos comment that was stuck in the full name for the way it's just mapped, and we added the word underscore failed to it. It initially said it with Watson test. Okay. Now, let's go back into here and look at Tim and see what it thinks about that account. Our reconciliation finished means it found all the users, returned them back, said, I'm done, I got everybody. If we go in here now and we look at our end user, our end user is Mr. Wills. When we refresh this and look at his accounts, we're going to see that he has two accounts. The Red Hat account we provisioned and the ITEM account we provisioned. He got the Red Hat account because we told him to. Note the yield symbol here. Okay, This tells me that my user is not the way I want him to be inside of the Unix target, the Red Hat resource, because of a rule that's being violated that was defined by the provisioning policy. When I look at that and click on it, it says, his GCO's comment is Watson underscore fail, but it should actually only say Watson underscore test. Now the product's pretty smart. Right now we're telling it to warn us when things are not correct. So if I need to correct them as an administrator, I can go in and look at the user's account and I can know that they are not correct and I can choose to correct them or non-correct them. However, the policy enforcement of our tool also allows the system to actually suspend the user if they're not compliant or correct the user and put them back into a um, compliant status based on your rules. Now, that's a little over the top here as far as the topic goes, but what we're trying to do is just show you that the tool is very robust, can do lots to you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at that account, which we know the account is currently active. See the status here? Shows us it's active. Tim provisioned it. Let's go in and suspend that user right now in Tim 
and we'll see what that does on the endpoint target. Right now, I submitted a suspend request effective immediately. Note, you can set this for a future day. We're going to suspend that user. We'll go back and look at our view completed request, and we're going to note that there's a outbound request that's going to go RMI over to the endpoint target and manage that. Note, nothing is installed on the Red Hat machine. Right now in the example, I'm configured and I'm logging in as root, but you can set up a sudo config so that you can actually have your sudo user with reduced privileges go out there and do this work. Our suspend action was successful, meaning Tim went out to Red Hat and suspended the user. User can't log into the endpoint target. If we go into this user here, and when we go in and look at the account, we can go see on the user account info, the local password is locked. The user cannot now log into the system. Password locked. Okay. Um, we see that. I didn't do anything in the native system. I just sent it in through Tim. Now let's go back into Tim. And we will go back to that user and we will restore the user. Notice the status is inactive. Now I can set him to restored. And the same thing is going to happen. A RMI request is going to go from your target over to the endpoint, manage the user, and update them. One thing I will show you here as this modify request is going through, let's just show you a user change on the user. So um, these are some groups that the user has. We're just going to add them to one more group. It really doesn't matter what group. We'll just add them to the top one, the item group add. And what I'm showing you is when we do a return on this user through our interrogation, we know we modify the user's group. We know that our group has two users now where he didn't before. So let's see if Tim sees that, right? It's live changes based on the reconciliation. That's important for you to know. As we go back to this endpoint target, our restore of our user completed. The user is active now. If I go back to Linux and I look at my users, pull them up on his account settings, he is now password, I think it's still not refreshed. It wills, account info, local password is locked. Shouldn't be, should be unchecked. Um, let's see. Nope, not sure why. Detail, we'll fix it. Um, let's go back though and show you that the user's group. He's in a different group now. He's been added to this item group. Tim controlled it, okay? So let's go into Tim, go to Manage Service, find the service. In this case, we're only looking for the Red Hat one. We're going to do a reconciliation. We're going to submit that, and we're going to view the status of the request. It's going out. It's looking at the users. It'll bring everything back, make sure that he's good, make sure that his status matches, and uh, we'll go from there. We go to close a couple of these tabs. Here's our user, refresh this user, we'll look at the accounts, we'll do a refresh. He's still non-compliant because his geos comment is not correct. If we look at the user's account, we're looking for his group membership to see what types of groups he's in. We look at the standard attributes, these are all right. We can see that his primary group is the only one there. Let's see if that modify request finished yet for the user's group on the reconciliation. Now it just finished. Go back and manage the account. Refresh this. In here for our administrative choices, we see he's added to a secondary group. Um, our restore of that user didn't work. He's still inactive. Um, this restore function should have actually made that user inactive. Let's go back and view that request to see what happened. Maybe we actually never pushed it. As the restore said that it worked. Um, it actually didn't, though. has an audit trail, which is nice. You can go back and see what happened. Um, this tells me the account was restored. Not sure if it was a timing issue based on the account and the suspend and restore, but let's see what happens after this restore. Okay, it's telling me the restore worked. Did it before. Go back and look at the uh, target, refresh that, look at my users, look at his account info. Now we can see the local password is not locked. Not sure why I didn't do it the first time. Timing, not sure. Small detail, it works. Um, and that in a nutshell is how you're provisioning to a remote target. 
In this case, let me show you the actual service and the details of how we're getting there and what the tool is that does that. Um, what we're doing is we're looking at our Linux profile. Here it is. What we're doing is we're managing a Red Hat Linux 6. It goes to this resource, which is a Windows resource running Tivoli Directory Integrator. And it asks me what my managed resource is. My Linux target is IP address 102. Real simple. I authenticate using my root user and my password. We have options for you. You can even go sudo user. In this case, my dispatcher is the assembly line that's actually the magic code that goes out there and makes your remote API calls. So that's how this is set up. Simple service, simple provisioning policy, manage the endpoint target. It'll add, modify, suspend, restore, delete. You can even do post functions in post execs from the provisioning. If I do the user add, I can then say run this script at the end of it. It's fire and forget though. Just remember that. that. Um, the version I'm running here uh, for this example is item 5.1.0, fix pack 13, Windows machine, two VMs, DB2, IBM LDAP, all running in one environment. Very simple demo. Just to give you an example, Tim can provision to your remote Linux target using a simple interface with a simple set of role-based provisioning attributes. You can add workflows, you can add approvals, you can add mail notifications. There's a bunch that's all in the product, already built in. All you got to do is leverage it.